What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be playing the Columbia Park Disc Golf Course in Kennewick, Washington. And uh, this is one of many videos that I hope to publish sometime soon from my trip to the US this summer. And uh, most of these courses I will be playing for the first time ever, so I'll be taking you along and uh, talking you through some of my observations. Hole 1 was a really nice opening hole, just nothing really in the way, just let loose, try rip on something. Unfortunately for me, <laughs> I got really lucky with my jump putt there and converted from the outside circle 2 look. Hole 2 does have a mando left of the center tree, the center tallest tree that you see. And uh, I'm just trying to throw a sidearm flex shot here. I did find these tee pads a little bit difficult, they seemed a little bit skinny for me, so I do end up slipping off of a couple of tee pads. Nothing major, but just something that I ended up noticing during my round. And convert on the birdie on hole 2. Hole 3 does have an interesting double mando that <laughs> the moment I saw, I knew that I couldn't be throwing a backhand at it because I didn't feel confident hitting it. And I didn't think it was worth it to try and park the hole, so I ended up pitching a sidearm through there, hoping I wouldn't skip too far right, but I did. So I just have this long look for a birdie. My main goal there was to not push too long into those bushes to make this comeback putt too hard. Starting off minus two through three. Moving on to hole four. Hole four was an island hole with this very daunting initial gap. And like I just mentioned on the last hole, I wasn't feeling confident with my backhand and hitting gaps. So naturally, <laughs> I ended up hitting the right side bush there and missing the island. Leaving myself with a really easy decision just to try pitch up. Take my bogey on this hole, walk away. Knowing that there should be many more birdie opportunities on this course. Hole 5 looked to be a really fun hole. There's just tons of space out to the left to try to throw this sidearm hyzer that I'm trying to. It does did look like there was a right side gap too, but that was a lot tighter of a backhand line. And I was not interested in that in the least. I just ended up really releasing my tee shot a little bit, leaving myself with a tricky little pitch up. Try and get my par in this hole with this very protected green just unfortunately chain out left side player b seems to be on point with those putts hole six coming in at 298 feet or 91 meters it was just a backhand hyzer around uh behind this left bush that you can see on your screen as we'll get to the putt, I believe I am just outside of circle one on this. Trying to give it a long stab at it. And convert on the birdie putt. Which felt really good after those back-to-back -back bogeys. Hole seven. Distance wise didn't seem too tricky, but there was no real low line that I saw. So I tried going over the top. Just trying to crunch on a wraith here. And unfortunately end up tagging some of the cabbage up top. And then falling in somewhere in that circle two range. And then hoping for the best again. And player B still on point with those correction putts. Moving on to hole eight. Hole eight was the longest hole so far. There is an OB river that's a OB, OB road that plays as a river that crosses I believe 80 feet short of the basket so I was just trying to throw something as hard as I could knowing that since the road was pretty narrow it would skip over probably if I ended up hitting it and a really bad second shot leaves me with a really long par putt that I do not convert on so I end up taking a Taking a bogey here. Mm -hmm. 
Hole 9 coming in at 302 feet, 92 meters. We're playing back towards the tee pad of hole 1, ending this uh, front 9 loop. And we're playing to that protected green with all those trees around the basket. End up releasing a little early, scared to commit to that right side. And again, another long jumper. Just a poke and pray at this point, really. Seeing if I can make any magic happen. Taking my par and walking on to hole 10. Hole 10, the U disc is a little bit misleading. We're playing to a different basket position that is off the left side of those uh, tree line, bush line. Just playing over this ditch. I'm trying to throw a sidearm flat that stalls out, but I end up getting a little over on it. Leaving myself with another really long look. I'm walking away with an easy par. Stepping up to hole 11. Uh, I had the tee box here. So I'm just throwing a big sidearm hyzer with a wraith. And I was extremely happy with this. Knowing that my strength isn't those uh, sidearm hyzers. But by the time that we got to the basket, I found out that there was actually a double mando that I had missed. That those two big trees off to the right side of the fairway forces you to throw this backhand flex shot. So you be the judge of if my score is valid or not. But we didn't have the time to go back and play it right. This is hole 12, I believe. You can see two baskets on your screen. We are actually playing to the left one. And I was still still testing out a new disc at this point. Throwing a, a PA5 and ended up just yanking it a little to the right. And then hole 13 looked to be a perfect birdie opportunity to get back on the horse. I ended up pulling it a little right, just tagging that early trees that really killed any any chance of birdie here so I just have to pitch up again and this one I was careful because I was warned that there was a ditch behind the basket that if you do throw a disc into you might lose forever so nothing too special there hole 14 I did have some technical difficulties so you won't see my drive here but there is a sidearm hyzer gap and a backhand hyzer gap with tons of uh, trees to hit on your way in and I ended up hitting one of the many branches and unfortunately on my upshot hit that too and then I uh, just left my putt low for par taking another bogey unforced error really hole 15 290 feet 88 meters uh, this was a blind shot I could not see the basket but now after the fact, I do know that the basket is perfectly in line with that bush that I just threw at. And uh, thankfully my distance skipped further away, leaving myself with somewhere in the middle of circle one. Putt for birdie. And get back to under par. Hole 16 was another blind shot. Uh, coming in at 323 feet. And I was just told to go right, but not too far right, as there is a little stream running along the right side behind the basket. And unfortunately, just left my shot really low. And I wanted to get a little fun with this approach shot, just throwing a Sky Anheuser with my harp. Trying to pitch up there. Only reason for that was not trying to go too long and just try to have it float in. Maybe give it a soft chance at going in. Stepping up to hole 17. Hole 17, I really struggled to find a line that seemed viable, so I tried throwing a Leopard 3 on a little bit of a hyzer flip on this outside hyzer. And that did not work out in the slightest. Just early released it straight into the straight into the one of the many trees that were blocking that inside gap. I'm just pitching up for par here. A little tester putt, but convert. 
And then our final hole of the day, hole 18, 333 feet, 101 meters. I'm just trying to throw a wraith here on a little bit of a flex shot. Released it on a touch too much hyzer. Thankfully, it kept pushing relatively straight. And I'm going to call this one somewhere around that 45 foot mark. Perfectly online, but just a little low. Putting me at finishing one under par or a 53 on this par 54 course. If you enjoyed what you saw, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe so that you can see more videos that I'll be publishing here shortly. Thanks for watching.